Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Look, we don't have too many professional gamers on the show, but we have one here today. Uh, we've got a, a semi-pro from uh, Warzone. Uh, Mr. Matt Best is on the show. Hello, hello. You might know me from Twitch.com or Twitch TV, you know? You're so, massive in the Twitch world it's, now. It's my new label, actually. It's my new label. I'm not massive, man. I keep my community small, but I, I take gaming very serious, Ross. You do. I do. I you do. do. And I do. so uh, we didn't know whether this was going to be a Drinking Bros sports episode or just a normal Drinking Bros show because you're that dude now. You know, it can be whatever we want. And uh, I, would, I do want to say right off the bat, cheers, Drinking Bros. It's been a while since you've been on the show. I'm up in Austin. I was filming some Veterans React stuff with Tim Kennedy, and I'm like, Ross, let's do a show. And uh, Ross was nice enough to wait about an hour after I got delayed. And, well, and I got look, some whiskey in the cup because I'm not driving home tonight. We'll, and, always, uh, we'll always have some drinks with, oh, uh, with friends, obviously. Plus, you course. were working with Mr. Uh, Timothy Kennedy. Of course. Uh, how's, 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 how's he doing? Dude, man, I tell you, like when I do shows with him, whether it's a podcast or Veterans React, that dude just like injects life into his veins. The second we start rolling, he's like, what can I? I'm like, yeah. oh, man, he, he's, he's such a blast. I love that guy. He's one of those dudes. I, I said this the other day on an interview that I was like um, uh, talking about my kid doing jujitsu, ju right? And uh, they were like, oh, man, uh, who do you want him to be like? Who do you want your kid to be like when, you, when they grow up? And I was like, you know, Tim Kennedy is. Yeah. Like Tim Kennedy is like the dude where you're like, man, if my son turns out to be like Tim Kennedy, I feel like well, he will have made it in life. And your son is a handsome kid, man. He's got like the Captain America hair and he eyes. Is. Like yeah. that's a good looking kid, man. Good looking kid. Yeah. But as far as like life skills, right? Yeah. Where you're like, if your kid is Tim Kennedy going out in the world, I don't give a fuck where you drop Tim Kennedy in this world. He'll be fine. Right. Right. And he, like he's one of those guys where you feel like, all right, great. If you're, you put him in the fucking desert with just, you know, a half a, uh, a jug of water, he'll be fine. Or yeah. if you put him in a boxing ring. He like, has a high survivability rate in any critical situation, whether that's a post-apocalyptic world and or just, you know, being malnourished. Like, he's, he's the dude you want on your team. Yes. Which is a funny story because we went into this whole hypothetical situation in a post-apocalyptic world where the fault line would essentially sit mm -hmm. and the boundary because he is up here in Austin and I'm down in Bernie. Yeah. New Braunfels. So I get everything south of New Braunfels. But we'll have good communication, but we're going to run our tribe separately, you know. Is he running Austin? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, he, he's so he's run, running point in Austin? He, he's running point in Austin. Good. Because you know we might need it, right? Yeah, and I'm not going to give away some of the stuff that those dudes have all... I'm like... Y'all are prepared. I thought I was prepared, but y'all prepared. It's fucking crazy, though. So we we just moved here, obviously. Yeah. Um, our advertisers are here. Uh, LA is in shambles. Everybody else, entertainment-wise, is moving yeah. here. And it made sense. Look, we've been here. It was one of those things where, because um, you know, a lot of people in the audience asked, they were like, what was the big move to Austin for? The advertisers were here. We signed, we signed a couple of big deals here. And then we, we just kept coming for celebrity guests. Um, obviously, the Post Malone story went viral where uh, I beat him for uh, 20 grand in buck naked uh, beer pong. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he, it was a direct deposit in the account too. Ooh. Within three hours. Like he does not fuck he around fuck with around. that. But yeah. that was here. Uh, the Alex Jones shit was here. Like there was uh, Tank Williams. All those guys, uh, all these guests were in Austin yep. because it's a blast of a talent. So we're like, great, man. Fucking Texas guns. Fuck everyone. Then we get yeah. here. Yeah. And it's super liberal. Yeah. Um, I was surprised. Well, it's interesting to see that. I think that uh, like L.A. and, you know, New York were kind of the capitals of entertainment. And and right now, like Nashville and Austin seem to be kind of the epicenters. Correct. For, like, yeah. Up and coming talent. Now, yeah, my, my reservation with that, as I'm sure you know, it's like don't Californiaize Texas. Like, yeah. you know, you're a lot of these guys and I'm, I'm using this in a very like humorous way, but like it's like virology they, they they took over the host of california and just fucking ruined it economically and socially and then they want to move to a state like texas and fuck it up and it's like the reason you moved is because the people that founded the principles and we believe in constitutional rights that's why we live here don't yeah. fuck it up because yeah. you moved here for a reason you know and it's not even like a social boundary i think as far as like you know gay rights or no cares there's like if you go out in austin there's like rainbow flags painted or right on dude that's awesome kick ass but like don't impede on our constitutional rights or civil liberties and we'll be good yeah and i mean it's one of those things where god damn it man and i hate to sound like super right on this but with la you've made it a shithole 
right? Yeah. So now you want to leave. Don't bring the same fucking ideals. Well, that's exactly here. what I'm saying. You're just going to do the same exact thing. It's yes, and but I feel like every town that's cool, that's what happens, right? And, and I'll start off on a on a smaller scale. Asheville, yeah. North Carolina. So Asheville, okay. when when Jesse and I decided to have kids, I was like, look, I'm you know I typically direct and star in one movie a year. I write one book a year, and then we started doing podcasts, and I was like, I can do that anywhere. Um, and I was kind of ahead of the curve of like I told Jesse, just pick a city that you like. Um, we were doing press for 50K and a Call Girl, a love story at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd never been to Wilmington, nothing. But when we were there, I was like, we were doing some radio interviews. And I was like, this is beautiful and amazing. Uh, and then we just bought a house there and that was it. We didn't know anyone and it was great. Um, when we were there, everybody was like, oh man, you should check out Asheville. Asheville's fucking dope, dude. It's in the mountains, craft brewery, all this yeah. other stuff. And I was like, all right, great. So we went to Asheville for like a, like a getaway weekend right after the, the first child was born. And it was so cool that other people were just starting to move in here. And I turned to Jesse at this bar and I go, watch, this will be a fucking hipster, liberal bullshit place in yeah. like four years. We went back about uh, maybe six months ago. That's exactly what happened to that city. Really? And I was like, God damn it, man. With Austin, yeah. I feel like it's, it's getting that way already. And like, we just moved here. Because I mean, shit, we moved here 48 hours later. They defunded the police. Yeah, they took a, a third of the million dollars, bro. A third of the budget away from the Austin police, and it's like, God damn it, man! For for what? Like, you see what's going on in these other cities. Yeah. You see what's going on in, in Seattle, Portland, L.A., San Francisco. I have very close friends in Portland who are kind of on the government side that I used to work with in a special operations capacity, and they they they've gave me not like insider information, but kind of the the dynamics of what's happening. And you're just like. Are, are these people lunatics? Yeah. They're, 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 in, they're insane. And, and my thing is this, if you want to burn down your own city, fine. Right. But don't expect the police to save you. Um, if I'm, yeah. if I'm a police officer, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Uh, and then don't expect the federal government to bail you out once you burn down all your shit, yeah. because that's what's happening now where they're like, Oh, well, we'll give us money. Trump. We fucking burn down our city. We need to rebuild. Yeah. Well, you did it. No. Why? Yeah, yeah. You burned down your own shit. Yeah, I mean, the economic stipulations associated with that, even if you look at it, they're burning down local business owners who, in a high rate, are end up being minorities and similar minorities to the people that are doing it. And I'm not even making that a race thing. I'm making that just across the board. Yeah. And so you're impacting, essentially, your own personal community, your own family. That's what community is there for. You're their family. And it's it's a very bizarre, bizarre thing like i can't imagine going down to like my local liquor store and burning it down like no I, I would do the opposite i would go protect it because yeah. they're sweet people and they're amazing people and yeah i don't know i don't i think there's so many um you know uh, uh podcasts and everything to talk about that I'm, I'm just at like an end of it because i you know at the end of the day you get a vote and it's like you have to vote for civil liberties and a constitutional rights like you got to do it like and we know we know where that goes, at least in my own personal opinion. Yeah, I, look, there is some podcast talking about it, but let's face it, most of these guys are from LA. Yeah. So they're afraid to get involved in it. And well, of course, because it's career ruining, right? And that's yeah. the problem. You build a sustainment bubble where you have to kind of conform to an ideology or you're ostracized from that community and entertainment. And then that leaves you with no job. And so you're a conformist at the end of the day and you, you're not able to free think and develop your own personal ideas. I mean, I know people that have been fired for saying all lives matter and you're like, okay, well that, that, that's their personal first amendment right to say that. Like it's it, going, it's going yeah, on in good year. Yeah, it's right not now. like they're like yeah. F this certain community or people, right? Like, come on, man. No one, no one thinks that really. No, like it's not, no. A thing. it's not 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 a thing. There's no institutional racism right now. Like there's, there's, are there like, far like racist on probably every spectrum yeah of course we can't change humanity humanity is a condition of fucking genetics or some shit i'm not a scientist but at the end of the day there's like no institutional racism and most all people go i don't care what fucking color you are, are you cool like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah are like, we cool yeah it's just like let's have a beer and chill out man yeah uh, but the, look the media Legalize blows that it out of so proportion we can smoke some of it you know? yeah exactly is that on the docket for texas I don't know. I heard this is hearsay and uh, I'm probably all fake news when I talk, but uh, I think that they're trying to find a way to um, test people when they drive, at least like a, an immediate mm -hmm. test to see if it's in their system at that time. Um, but, but the problem with that is you have so many lobby groups and, you know, you have a lot of big pharma people that are combating it, as you know, and I didn't really realize, but a little research like 
alcohol and the tobacco industry yeah. are fighting it so hard because you know who wants to be a drunk to go to sleep when you can smoke some weed yeah and like you know so it's because if you legalize it, then that'll take away. But at the end, they just like buying drinks. I, and I swear, I hope Trump comes out and just goes, "Hey, it's federally decriminalized to let's say three ounces or whatever." Like you know, just let's start small, but something so we're not like locking dudes up for carrying around a you know a gram of weed. Like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? I heard in his second term that's going to be one of the things where it's like, "Hey, man." Let's get through this first one, and then the second one, fuck it, we'll well, we'll, that, we'll legalize it. But uh, yeah. well, people aren't going to like necessarily vote in foreign policy and stuff like that. They 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 vote on what the one thing that matters most to them right now, and like and that's, that's 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 a bit that's a big swing vote right there, winner. So we know what that is. We know what that is. Yeah, obviously it's gay rights. <laughs> um, so, so you and I can have sex in public, and so oh, bro, hey, just be it's done. Twenty twenty, I'll start fucking dudes. Whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't care. Let's go. Let's go. At this point, who really cares? Because how much longer do we have left? I mean, I'm a semi pro gamer, so yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, semi pro gamer on the show, Matt Best. That's Matt Best eleven X on Twitch. Uh, where's the camera? There, there, there. Twitch is huge now, man. Yeah, um, it's taken over the world. Like I look, I get a six year old kid. Yeah, um, and. All he wants to do is watch other people play video games, which is essentially what Twitch is, right? And yeah. it's shocking to me where I'm like, hey, do you want to play this? And he's like, yeah, I want to play it, but I also want to see like who's better and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, fuck. But if you peel that onion back, that was my first kind of stance on it was like, who the fuck would ever watch someone play video games? Yeah. Like play it yourself, fucking yeah, yeah, jackass. Yeah, yeah. But when you start to actually look at it, I mean, you have to look at it also from like an economic perspective. A lot of people can't afford a computer to play Call of Duty Warzone, right? But it's a high CPU processing power that requires to play that game. And the moreover, you might not be that good at it. So watching like these pro guys like a Nick Merckx or a Tin the Tap Man, those guys are insane at the game. And mm -hmm. it's entertaining to watch. Like I could have never made that play. And, and you get it. And not only that, you get the personality associated with it because it's essentially watching a podcast. And if you have people in like your Discord account, it, it's such like a community building thing. And that's been the most enjoyment enjoyable thing for me and why I've will keep sustaining it is, yeah. you know, we get 200, 300 people in there and I haven't really promoted it a lot because I like every time I log in, I see the same people like, what up? We call ourselves the besties. And like, yeah. everybody's so kind to each other and supporting. Like if it's a birthday, everybody's fucking happy birthday. It's just, it's so fucking cool. It's like a little community online and there's no, there's a separation because of it's, it's, it's obviously online that, I don't really know how people look or their political affiliation. It's just kind of like we just judge each other on on the you know the characters they type, and and that's pretty fucking chill because everybody's kind. You know? Yeah, I, it's funny you say that, man, because it's the same with us. Like we've been we've talked about this numerous times on the show. We've been shadow banned on YouTube forever now at this point, ever since we had Alex Jones on, and okay. so we get for Ross Patterson Revolution, we go uh, live at noon, so we call the we call the nooners. The nooner yeah. crew shows up every day, about two or three hundred people. And it's the same thing. Yeah, it's awesome. I know, I feel like I know all of like them. Literally, literally where it's yeah. just like, oh, all right, sweet, man. Like, I know exactly who you are. And, and you know, people shout out their podcasts and everything else. And I'm like, and, and that's rad. I, I, I can't imagine when it becomes big or if it, if it does. YouTube-wise, no, like, all, the audio oh, yeah. numbers are it's, off the charts. It, it's, but like, it's going there, man. I think you have all these competitive platforms that are bid-warring against the biggest gamers. I mean, you have Facebook live streaming that's poached a lot of people. You have Twitch obviously and there's some other platforms that are up and coming and then now youtube with like them i don't know if they paid dr disrespect but now he's solely streaming on there like everybody's trying to get into that space at yes. this point and it's it's going to be massive i mean i think when they did league of legends um the big tournament it was more watched and the viewership was higher than the super bowl so it, it's no joke i mean and it's an international audience it's not like socially conditioned to watch football soccer or something it's it's just and everybody, the money, the money that you're getting off of that. I remember that last Fortnite tournament. Um, the winner got seventeen and a half million dollars yeah, yeah. for that, and it's like I saw some fucking news story on that too. And like the hosts were all like, "Huh, paying video games." I'm like, "You just sound like a jealous bitch because some eighteen year old made seventeen million dollars playing video games, and you're just so stubborn to actually recognize that that that's training. Those are dude. They have like." pixel games out there where you have to click the pixels real quick to yeah. test your aiming and stuff like it's i wouldn't say like it's an athletic sport but it's a pro sport just like it's getting golf, there right like it's, it's, it's a very 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 technical thing and it's it's kind of a young man's game to be honest because the cognitive function well in the sports world when covid hit 
Because yeah. obviously, Drinking Bros Sports, like we cover the spreads on all this shit. Yeah. So it was like, all right, great. Well, what's everybody going to bet on? Um, it moved to NBA 2K. ESPN started televising NBA 2K matches. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so you were betting on that online. Whoa. And then... Um, like pro gamers playing each correct. other? No shit. Yeah, yeah. And then they brought the NBA players in. So the NBA players, the best oh, of best, like Kevin shit. Durant and those guys were playing each other. And then they, they did a tournament on uh, ESPN2 where you were watching them play and you were betting on them. And then, oddly enough, I mean, this was the craziest one, was NASCAR. So NASCAR, because they couldn't drive, they had the simulators... Um, so they would get in the simulator, drive, and then Fox, who, who, you know, televises NASCAR every Sunday, they put the real live drivers in their simulators going live on Sundays and you were betting on that. I bet it had like more viewership too. It did. <laughs> I, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So not only no, we're all going more, to VR, bro. We're all going to VR. It's going to be crazy. But not only did it have more viewership, but like the, the, the craziest thing to me was it looked real. So Jesse came in. Um, and I was watching it and I was like, cause we, I knew we were going to talk about the show. So I was watching it. She goes, what the fuck are you watching NASCAR? And I go, look again. She goes, Oh shit. Is that fake? And I was like, yeah, it's not fake. I mean, it's, it's a video game, but it looks real. And that was the one sport to me, I guess the first sport that translated to a video game where I was like, well, shit, I really don't need to watch the real NASCAR now. Like, I can just. That's true. I feel like if you can drive in a, in a real car, you're probably pretty damn good at a sim. Yeah. yeah. I, and that's the thing. And then you flip world. it over to, uh, I talked about this story briefly last week with um, uh, the flight simulators, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's become big business for Microsoft. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so Jared Microsoft. Was that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft now, you can fly to any spot in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know what the most visited place was? Dubai. No. What? Little St. James. St. James? Epstein Island. Oh my God. Yeah. I never thought about that. I didn't either. And so they, once they ran, they're, the they're numbers, looking for the submarines on there. Uh, yeah. Whatever the shit was on the islands. Like, shit. so everybody was screenshotting them over Epstein's Island. And that's become a thing now where wow. it was just like, oh shit. Um, you're, you're taking it to a, a whole, whole nother new. level where yeah. it's just like, all right, cool, man. And then, you know, now that sports has come back, um, the ratings aren't great, mostly because it's political, where it's just like, all right, sweet, man. So the people who got into video games when sports ended, some of them aren't leaving that world where they're just like, hey, man, I'd rather just hang out with my friends and not deal with politics and shit. Because yeah. right now, you watch an NBA game, we're, we're in the playoffs right now. Um, in real NBA? Be, yeah. Real oh, NBA. I saw them playing basketball. Are they? Oh, so it's like, yeah. oh, shit. I, exactly. I don't watch sports. So. They're, well, they're, they're back, but they're in, a, they're in a bubble. And one would think the ratings would be huge. They're not. And people are trying to figure out uh, whether or not it is because of gamers and the time off or the politics. I lean more towards the politics and yeah. no fans because right now every jersey is Black Lives Matter. Um, and on the court, that logo is center court. So like... For yeah. two and a half hours, man, but the, you've got to stare at that, that in your that's face. That's the problem for me, too. It's just like everything is so politically infused at this point. It's like when I order a fucking hamburger, I don't care if the cow is Democratic or Republican or Democrat or Republican. I don't care. I don't. It's, I just want to eat the fucking hamburger and, and be on my way. And it's the same thing with sports. Like, I don't I don't care about what Conor McGregor's fucking, you know, politics are i just want to see him show up make weight and beat the fuck out of someone or get have khabib maul him right right because like i'm sure if khabib and i sat down we would drastically di disagree but i tune in when he fights because he's a world-class fighter yeah and he's great at it so it's boring shit to watch but he's great at it well you know you gotta win how you win <laughs> i guess but yeah i want him out so bad I hope Gagey kicks the shit out of him and now I listen, never have to hear about Khabib again. If there's one fight that I would call on an emotional basis, it's going to be that one because I know Justin personally and he's a great fucking dude and I want him to win so Same. bad. Yeah. I might even put money on it just to give it a good charm or something. I don't know. Yeah, he'll be an underdog. I can tell you that. You kidding me? Of course. It'll like probably 400. A fight like that will probably be two and a half to one, like maybe three to one on that. Um, yeah. Khabib is just... It's Khabib. Yeah. Uh, and it sucks, man. It reminds me, I always say this on the show, it reminds me of Floyd Mayweather in boxing where it's like, it's a lot of defense, it's boring to watch, but he he, he doesn't lose. So like, what are you going to yeah. do at the end of the day? Well, in preservation, I think of your career, it's why Mayweather went so long. And it's and a lot of those guys, it's like you're at that top tier level and then they fight against guys like a Khabib or a Mayweather and they're like, 
he's just so much better than me I know. <laughs> you know so it's fucking crazy man it's crazy it's crazy um i want to talk about black rifle coffee dude sure, you guys man. are in stores now so i drove yeah. cross country yeah uh six states all the way through i pop in sleepy eyed trying to get some coffee i think i was in mississippi maybe or missouri and yeah. i'm looking I'm, I'm just trying to grab a can with like three shots two shots or something in it and i see black rifle coffee now yeah. In cans, in a fucking, I mean, it's a it's a mini mart. Like, yeah. I mean, you're in gas stations across the United States, and I was like, oh shit, you guys made it. Like that felt yeah. like holy shit, you made it because it was Starbucks, yeah, and then Black Rifle Coffee, and I was like, holy shit, how did that happen? Well, I mean, you know, we've all always had these grand ideas of 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 you know increasing our market share and different sales channels, and like obviously those are heavy on the capital side. And I think something that we did very correctly in the business was just reinvest everything that we were making into the business of the business. And part of that rollout is, uh, you know, Evan and I have been wanting to do ready to drink RTD forever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we still want to do our nitro cold brew cause him and I both drink just ice black coffee, but you know, we wanted to like be better than everybody else on a quality perspective. And then on a branding perspective and it took a while to get there on the the kind of r&d aspect of that but yeah man it, it, it's fucking wild when i see people going to a 7-eleven or a walmart now and we're got full end caps yeah. and they're displayed and the designs we've worked on and yeah it, it's a bizarre thing and i'm just super thankful for the support of the years and we keep growing and you know we got the uh, coffee shop in san antonio texas bitters yep. opening up october 3rd i believe will be the ribbon cutting ceremony and it, you know, it's right next to another coffee company and you know, it's which one, uh, it's just a coffee company. I don't yeah. know. They have a drive through. They're pretty big. Sure. 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 Uh, any name? Do you know? No, I forgot the name. What's it start head. with? What? What's it start with letter? Yeah. You pay with bucks there. Oh, gotcha. gotcha yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, no. Gotcha. And it's not even any stars going there. Or <laughs> it's, it's not bucks? even, it's not even compete competitive in nature. It's just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fucking crazy, man. I don't, I don't even know on that side. It's just a lot of hard work and it's, it's been rad, man. And we're doing a lot of other cool shit. And these are like projects like Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's, man. I, I took that first meeting shit, dude, two years ago when I first met Johnny Morris and he's an amazing human. I remember I drove you to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're working out. the book and yeah. uh, I drove you guys to the airport, you and Evan. And I was like, where the fuck are you guys going? Like, oh man, we're going to well, that was the second time because we weren't able to talk about any of this back then. So, no, you couldn't. I think that was the second time. The first time I actually flew out to Missouri and I didn't know if I was going to meet Johnny and sat down. And I was like, just like a good old boy, he was a great dude. And to see now us and nearly all of Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's and things that I was like enamored by as a child, and then seeing these big displays of our coffee company, it's it's fucking cool, man. It's fucking awesome. It's rad. It's rad. It's like you invest so much of your time and energy in these things, and then you start to see them, you know, happen, and then people are invested in the brand and the quality of the product. I'm like, fucking a, man. It's the American dream right here. I like this, and all we can do is keep keep chugging along and fucking get after it. The cool thing about your cans in particular was, I, I don't know who did the design on it, but it looks like it was a professional brand that had been around for a while. Because I'll see these new like ready to drink companies, yeah, yeah. Um, that like like bang. Right, you see, bang energy, and yeah. you're like, it looks like a child designed that in Japan on acid. Where you're like, yeah. hey man, who did this? Um, with you guys, yeah, it fit in with Starbucks and everything else. Where you're like, oh, all right, cool, man. Uh, it seems seamless. I, I will say, I am insanely proud. We're launching two new SKUs, two new items, 15 ounces, which are triple shots. So that's gonna be right up your alley. It's my jam. You know that Dude. that cold that nitro. So like, I I talked about this earlier. Like, I, Starbucks. That nitro shit. Yeah. I hate Starbucks. Yeah. I've always fucking hated Starbucks. I'm a, I'm a get it in me type of guy with coffee. And like the nitro there, I was like, all right, fuck you. I'll, I'll have this. If you guys do nitro. Oh, dude, I've already sampled some of the nitro options that we've been working on on the coffee department that they blow every other company out of the water. But the 15 ounce options that we're coming out with at the end of year are are triple shots 300 milligrams of caffeine there so we it's, go dude it's it's nasty and uh I'll, I'll take this win for me but me and gallagher we we didn't realize where the end date was as far as what we had to design it for mm -hmm. and we had like a week to do it and and we were working with third-party vendors and big corporations that are kind of like helping us during this rtd process so we get everything right you know health safety ev everything and the design sucked i'll just say it and uh we came in in one week and developed, I think, the coolest fucking looking can. 
it's similar to the old one. You'll still have the 11 ounces that look the same, but yeah, yeah. I'll show it to you. I, we, I did a little teaser on the last FRA podcast, but dude, it's fucking dope, man. I'm like, I can't wait for those to be in C stores and people be like, what's this? Holy shit. Yeah. Superpowers. Yeah. I, dude, I was unfamiliar. I'm not a big coffee guy where I know the, the, the type of brands and all that other shit. All I know is whenever I stay at your house, I had to wake up your wife. Yeah. I'm like, hey, man, can you put hit, this? Hit the espresso machine. Put the the weird bendy spoon in there. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, the loud noise is like I'm having an MRI. <laughs> yeah. It's an MRI <laughs> machine for coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I will say this. Like, dude, you have that and you're ready to tackle the yeah. day. With the nitro, it's the same way where I'm like, yo, Agreed. man, I just inject it right into my arm and I'm ready to rock. Favorite, favorite thing ever, ever is nitro. But yes. Yeah, yeah I mean, I... I Dude, I, I'm so stoked on that. And the cool thing about this is like the reason some of these products took so long is because mm -hmm. we wanted like the hell. I'm not being a pitch salesman. I'm just, I'm just, I love this shit. It was like, how do we get natural caffeine, right? Because you look at all these like beverage companies and they're like a feel good perspective. So you have that kind of placebo slash influx of sugars and things that make you feel good. And then you, you crash, right? But mm -hmm. when you drink it, you're like, I feel awesome. I need another one, right? It's an addictive quality. Where ores are like natural caffeine. We have in MCT oil in there and there's like, cognitive functions associated with it and it's just like it's good good shit and we have a lot of like things that we can say about a product that no one else in the, in the market does so i'm i'm really really excited for the next couple months because when that comes out i think it's going to be game changer for a lot of people. look you guys are always coming out with cool shit like all the time um and well, we don't the, really the other sleep thing is the we work the know? apparel like dude i see everybody wearing their fucking apparel everywhere like my, yes you know i do i see it everywhere you know i see rogan wearing it all the time yeah, uh, Joe wears it. That's pretty cool, man. He's he's a supporter of the brand, and we thank it's him crazy. For it. Yeah, but you're just like what what the fuck? You're just wearing a black rifle coffee t shirt. Yeah, I don't know. I think part of that, right? I think America, and not to make this political again, but I think that we're kind of like bridging where everything's politicized, and 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 we are somewhat of a political brand because we stand for certain constitutional rights. But these are things that have been written in stone, and we just like to have fucking fun and live life and. The cool thing and the best part about being a business owner now is no one, no one, no one can stop us other than ourselves. Right. I mean, we've had obviously, you know, certain people say they can't fuck around with us because we're right wing crazy people because I'm shooting an AR. Guns. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like you realize we're a special operations as we use as a tool to save our lives. But uh, that aspect of the business is like it really cool because we're always going to do what we want and we're going to like have fun and no one can tell us no. And, we'll, and if they do, we'll find a way around it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I feel like your brand in particular, like as you go along, cause I, I'm able to separate friendship from like your business, right. Of yeah. what you guys are doing business wise. And that's why we're able to have the, like a conversation like this, where it's like, I'm also a fan of your company versus our friendship as well. And it's like, uh, what you guys have done in that marketplace where it's just like, Hey, fuck you guys. Like, yeah. It, forget the fact that you're veterans and everything else, right? Just the the marketing and the fucking apparel and everything else of just the fuck you. We're having yeah. a blast versus like Starbucks is so goddamn boring to me. Like the rest of this shit is so boring to me that it's like I'm just looking for somebody outside the box. And if it's coffee or anything else in life, where I'm like, great, let's support that. I just want to support that because it's different. Well, and you know what you're getting into, right? For better or for worse, there are people that don't align, you know, like with our with our ideology or how we think about the world but at the end of the day like you can go watch any one of our commercials and be like oh they're a bunch of crazy dudes that like to have fun yeah if you don't support it, don't fucking buy it right and, yeah, yeah, yeah and i think that's cool because you have all the other companies that are worried about you know shaving a 0 0.01 off their bottom line to make a more profitable company and we're just here to have fucking fun give a great quality and experience to the end consumer and scale it and then yeah. give people opportunity to be their own business owners and succeed and then professionally develop young kids into fucking future executives. It's like, there's so many moving pieces in all of it, but that's, that's what we're going to do. I'm not worried about like being a quadruple million. I don't fucking care. Like I'm here to like live in my I, little home and yeah. hang out and sit in my pool and get drunk. dude. I told somebody this the other day cause they were like, Hey man, what's Matt like in real life? And I was like, dude, I, I think like if you capped out now, you were yeah. all done. Like your, your life and everything that, that like, it's like, ah, cool. I don't see you buying a Lamborghini. I don't see you being like, oh man, you know what I'd really like to do is, is buy I'm like, you know me, I'm on the opposite side. Like I'm fucking becoming New York times bestseller with you. And I'm like, that's, that's cool, man. Uh, I kind of want to work in this next project. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. go celebrate. And I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's whatever. No, it's a day. You yeah, celebrate for a day. And then the next day it's on to whatever the next fucking thing is. Yeah. And that's it. 
Yeah, to me, it's not the stature of of um, how culturally my book is perceived in the entertainment world. It's more, did the dude that's or gal that spent 25 bucks on my book, mm -hmm. how did they like it? And the response has been overwhelmingly positive of what yeah. we did. That's what fucking matters to me. And I'll take financial cuts to make sure that they enjoy it. I'm not trying to be some fucking martyr or something, but that's always how I've been. Like we do a lot of content that has pretty much a ne not negative, but no positive ROI on it. Meaning like it doesn't make us a lot of money, but we broke even and it was fun as fuck. And I got to make people laugh. And yeah. that's, that's what makes me happy. And that's my drive. Not, not like how can, if I want to make a lot of money, I'd be vlogging every single fucking day. I would be doing paywalls be and a lot of Paul. content. Yeah. Like I, I would just chase money and it's just not really me. And I'm not saying I'm better or worse for it. It's just who I am. I just want to get drunk and play the guitar in my fucking studio. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty yeah. much it. Like, Almost. Well, I just like two weeks ago, I started playing guitar again after this fucking shit. You show look really injury. tiny, by the way. I, I was waiting for that. Really yeah. tiny. That's so we call this a Pete Sampras arm in the biz. Okay. Pete Sampras is the greatest, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, right? Mm -hmm. But with a tennis player, you only work out one arm. Got it. And then the other one becomes is super it, tiny. Is it the front hand or back hand? What, or? Tell people what happened. You had surgery. It's real life shit. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure most people generally know. No, yeah, man. It was crazy, which I know where your fucking asshole response this was. I was teaching someone how to box, but it was not even like a like Matt going to fight pro fighters and breaks his foot right like that's that's me being hyper aggressive in life and you're never gonna change that about me this was i must have had fissure damage in my left bicep and which, what is that for the audience so I don't, I don't know what that your, is. your ligament your bicep ligament is essentially attached in two different places like your shoulder and a distal which is like your right here in your forearm mm -hmm. And I must have had some damage. I mean, I've lived a pretty crazy life. Like when you when, when you always talk about like these guys, oh, they have reserves and all this shit. Like we beat our bodies up super hard. You're jumping out of planes. You're eating charges. You're doing shit your body shouldn't be doing at a, at a in, in a long form way. I don't know where it came from, but the doctor essentially told me that I, there was probably pre existing um, injury there, mm -hmm. and it was just you know the straw on the camel's back that did it. Uh, but I was just like holding mitts. I cramped really hard my left bicep. And it was like almost if your bicep was held up like this. And I was like, ah, the fuck? And you know me, stubborn. I'm like, no worries. We'll keep going. We'll keep yeah. going. And I was just like holding mitts kind of thing, like with my boxing gloves. And then I was like, hey, duck. And I went to throw a left hook. And I just got this like shooting nerve pain down my whole entire arm. I was like, and it just like took everything out of my arm. I looked over at my bicep and I just saw it slide up from the bottom all the way up nearly to my shoulder fuck and i was like well it's a bicep tear right i've seen power lifters my brother yeah. used to be a pro power lifter and yeah man so i i distally tore my bicep and the the problem with like ligaments and and my injury i want to put this out is 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 nothing compared to like an acl repair like an eight months thing but yeah it's four months recovery is it takes forever to fucking heal so thank God for modern medicine. Cause you go in, you know, I knew it was terror. The, the ER I went to was like, Oh yeah, I think it's terror. You, you, you. I'm like, well, give yeah. me a fucking MRI, you idiots. And look, let's go. Why did I even come in here? Um, got the MRI, distal tear, full tear, meaning, so your bicep right here, I know it's audio some part, but imagine like right below your uh, elbow joint, about three inches down, it rips off there. And yeah. then that whole bicep that you see that peak on, on your normal arm rolls up. And what they essentially have to do is they cut open your arm and they have to grab your bicep tendon from up in there, drag it all the way back down, hold it. And they'll, what they'll do is they'll cut off the damaged portion of it. And that's where the MRI, and I didn't tell a lot of people this, I was not terrified, but the doctor went, Ugh, yeah, Ugh, on the MRI because they thought I had severe like fissure damage, meaning that they were going to have to cut like a couple inches off my bicep tendon, mm -hmm. which means year recovery. And I might not ever have full mobility in my arms. So I, I didn't tell like really my wife about that shit. Cause I was like, I'll deal with it if it comes. Yeah. Um, got the surgery. I woke up. First thing I did as I looked down, I was in my soft cast and I was like, we made it, yeah. <laughs> which meant I was in a hard cast. Cause if I was in a hard cast, it'd be significantly worse. So now it's merely just, you know, they, they drill through your bones. Excuse me. I didn't say the part. And then they, uh, they put like a little stopper under it and they, mm -hmm. they suture into this like little thing in your bone 
so they drill a hole to your bone and they just like clamp it on there and then it's you know bone takes you know eight weeks to calcify and fix itself or whatever and then ligaments take a little longer but the problem is you have to like stretch it out stretch it out but i'm i'm in a really good recovery process right now the pain is super easy i took they only gave me tylenol threes i took that once come on they didn't bump you up to the good stuff no i didn't ask for it he asked me i said yeah because i told my pa after i was like do they not he's like we have to ask for it i was like well i kind of like enduring it but do they give me a nerve blocker so they shoot through your shoulder here and they injection yeah yeah before i pass out so they shot me in the like the neck and shoulder yeah with with nerve blockers and you, you lose all feeling in your arm before they you know put you under and when I woke up, I was like, it was so crazy because I was like staring at it. And I like like to practice my brain. I'm like, I can hold something, but like you can't even move your fingers. But bro, when that nerve walk- blocker wears off, mm-hmm. yep, you're awake. Yeah. You're awake. It was like three in the morning and I was just like, fuck, fuck. And I'm like telling my wife, I'm like, give me the Tylenol threes. Like, let's go. And uh, it was You get just, asked for the good shit. At that yeah, point. I didn't have the good shit. But like, that's, that's she, crazy. It took her a while because she's like, we took the other one in preparation for this. I was like, just fucking throw it down my throat. But we we got there. And uh, yeah, after that first night, it's been fine. It's just more of merely an inconvenience and you can't really work out. And so I've definitely lost like eight pounds of muscle and yeah, trying to keep it in there. I still work out at like every day ish, mm-hmm. but you can only work out legs so much. And then I can't do any. I can only hold two pounds right now with my arm, my left arm. That's like the doctor prescribed S- thing. Similar thing happened to me. Um, I was I so I was putting bagel bites into the microwave <laughs> with my penis, as yeah. I usually do. Of course, got it slammed in the door, microwave door, um, and it rolled up. Right, same thing. Rolled up, and uh, the doctor had to take two inches off. Part of me just wanted to leave it ripped up, so I had that cool like Popeyes bicep yeah, on my dude. shoulder. But I was like, no, nah, I should, probably should make that decision <laughs> at 33 to do that for the rest of my life. Yeah, you know? I, so I had two inches taken off my penis. And, Damn, um, well, it's still a 10 inch dick then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, my wife was like, we we said our goodbyes to it and everything else. Um, we uh, uh, is it weird? She actually gave that to me in a pickle jar, and I oh, have it you on have my it. furnace. Yeah, yeah. I have an old school. It's not a fireplace. It's a furnace. Yeah. So you can you can heat the house and cook in it. It's well. Quite the a fun thing. thing about that is if you when you heat it, if it's on top of there, it'll it'll grow to four inches. So, yeah. It, um, the, the blood vessels expand now. So here's what happened when President Trump came over. Um, <laughs> he laid, but he laid an American flag over my dong oh, okay. and uh it was more for the fallen of who i used to be because he knew that i would never be and did your wife salute it that you man know? again well she had to yeah, yeah um yeah. and then uh you know some folks over at walter reed were nice enough to uh <laughs> Jesus, crime any Ross. <laughs> yeah. Just getting to alienate the audience. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. My dick was in Walter Reed because it deserved it, but the rest yeah, you of you got guys didn't. like Crispy out there burn their whole body that are like enduring a hundred plus surgeries, and we're talking about dick jokes at Walter Reed. Crispy, I love you. <laughs> he's been on the show yeah. numerous times. Of course, and he he's, goes, great, uh, I love him. he's fucking hilarious, man. Great dude, man. I'm Everybody's supposed- here, which is the fun thing. Like, yeah, dude, yeah. Jack Mandeville is now here. Yeah. When did Jack move here? I think a while back, man. I think everybody sees that where it's just like you go where your friends are. And I think uh, it's kind of that community aspect where, you know, you go hang out. I call them normies. Like, and it's yeah. nothing against it. But like, I have an inability to just like hang out with like normal people and talk about normal drama because I think it's so insignif- insignificant in the grand scheme of things that like I just want to focus on what the fuck I want to do and make a change in the world. Where I, I just, I, that's why I'm such an introvert. I'm like, I hide because I don't, I don't know. I, I can't. Ugh. Why? It's fucking boring. I mean, what the fuck, dude? You know? It's boring. Live your life. Live your life. Well, I'm, do- I'm living my life. I'm doing it how <laughs> I want to do it, Ross. And the people that want to go out and have frivolous conversations about nonsensical shit. And, and, and if that's enjoyable to them, cheers to you, man. Yeah. It's fucking it's America. Do you? I'm just doing me. The cool thing again, everybody seems to be here. Like, dude, we're having dinner at Dakota's on, on Sunday. Like hell yeah. Dakota's up in Spicewood. So yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. it's right there. I'm in Dripping Springs. We were up at the hangar today, uh, where Dakota flies his helicopter today sometimes because like Dakota's fucking hilarious. I love that dude. He'll uh sometimes like I'll hear a helicopter like little low. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that's weird. And I'll text him and he goes, yeah, I just flew past your house. Cause he'll just do a low pass on my house and my community. I'm yeah. like, you son of a bitch. He's dude. He's, he flies. 
I want to say every single day, pretty much. Yeah, him and Tim K are getting. Uh, I think both their their pilots license. I, I think Tim's like a couple hours away. From well, Dakota, I, fl- I flew with him. So the last time I did his show, dope. Um, because he's got uh, Front Toward Enemy, um, which yeah. is with us and uh, on the network. When I did his, we flew to his co-host house, and I was just like, "How far is this house?" And he's like, 40 "Yeah, that's minutes. where I just was at." Oh, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Harold. What yeah. a cool fucking dude, man. The best. He yeah. flies as well. No, so he's a like, professional fuckers, pilot. Yes. Yeah. The two of, so is Dakota. I mean, look, you have a well, yeah. Dakota, Dakota's like just getting into it, and I mean that in a reverent way, but like, yeah, the home, like Brandon's like legit, full on pilot. Well, from least, I mean, he owns a hangar and a fucking helicopter. So, so the two of those fuckers go out flying everywhere. Um, I mean, everywhere. So uh, the first time we were in Dakota's helicopter, I was like, uh, uh, "What do you do? Like, what, what do you do throughout the day?" And he goes, "We can go anywhere." And I was like, you don't have to file like a flight pattern or any of that shit. He goes, no, you can just go. And he goes, you know, if people have questions for you, like it'll be in the headset or whatever. And I was like, fucking A. I mean, because I, this was when we were looking at houses. Um, He was like, dude, I'll just take you around. We can just go look. Browse the neighborhoods on a helo. That's what we did. Yeah. And so we went everywhere across the city and, and it helped me kind of figure out what was what and, and all that other shit. And well, I was you see like, all stuff from the ground level and you're like, oh, this is so busy. And then you go, whoop come yep. up about 500 feet and you're like oh i yeah. see how it all is yeah but it's austin so it takes me 20 minutes to get to seven blocks exactly so because yeah. you're going in and out of places well i mean some of it shit is up in you know by by the lake yeah so it's like some of those are one lane roads and things like that and you're like oh I can is just... it travis lake here yeah like yeah. travis is up here uh lake austin um where i think we have uh, canyon lake down by us i got you well, yeah i think a certain someone bought uh a house in lake austin Who's that? Uh, another podcaster. Small time. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Small time guy. I'm sure. I'm um, sure, I'm not, sure. doesn't do nearly the numbers that we do, but uh, <laughs> small time guy. He's, uh, but I think he's up there. And um, uh, when you're able to zip around through a helicopter and all that shit, it's rad. And you're like, so, yeah. oh, fuck. Because um, he's got a pad that you land on. Yeah. And you're like, all well, right. Everybody thinks you need this giant pad. You just need like a fucking, I don't know. 10 what? by 10. Yeah, 10 by 10, 15 yeah. by 15 concrete pad with little lights there for night landing. That's it. Yeah, my buddy has one of those in his house. We uh, helicopter hog hunt off it and just right in front of the door. And it's the greatest thing ever. You just walk right to the front door, grab your gun, come back, fly up, go shoot some hogs, land, get your steak, fly back, maybe grab a beer, be safe about it. You know? It's yeah. Because the first time I was in it was right after Kobe died. Oh, shit. And I was like, he goes, hey, man, you want to go up? And I was like, cool. Are we going to say it? I'm going to say Kobe. I, I have, we a, go I have a firm belief outside of the DOD because you have to risk yourself in certain aspects. But like, if, if there's shit weather, I just, just don't fly just in a helicopter. Yeah. No. Not Same with it. a fucking like Learjet or something like that. Like trying to fly into Aspen with low vis and cold weather. Yeah. The auction levels. That's like flying in the mountains of Afghanistan. It's just like, I'm not a pilot, but some of the stories are here because you can't gauge what your, your lift is going to be. And yeah, I'm good. By the way, zero desire. Me personally. To do what? Be, be a fucking pilot. Oh, zero. Everybody goes, Matt, you need to get zero. your pilot's license. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm drunk in the back. That's yep. what I do. That's Same. what I do. Totally good with it. Yeah, no. Uh, he, he went to Dakota's. He was like, man, we can get you up. We can get you hours. Because I think he was doing hours with Tim Kennedy. Um, Probably, yeah. And, and they were you know, flying together, whatever. He's like, man, we can get you up and do the whole fucking thing. And I was like, no. I'm all good on that. Good on that, yeah. I've, I've Don't never, need to risk it. Yeah, I've never, for some reason, I'm a very technical person, but I've never wanted to, fl- like Jared was the same way when he was taking his uh, fixed wing pilot's license. I was like, he's like, get some hours. And I was like, no. No. I mean, I'll grab the controls and I've done it in a Cessna before and fly it and shit. But then once it's like landing, I'm like, it's all you. Yeah. I, I just, it's just not me. But, me neither. No. Yeah. Me neither. Same with like, again, Lamborghinis and shit like that. Like yeah. no desire to go. 180 miles per hour on the road for any reason i'm like i'm good i get my thrills from it like creating it's probably like we're creators yes so we like it's art that yeah. i like not not going 900 miles an hour but it is fun sometimes r.i.p paul walker true true it's been a long road yeah without you my friend <laughs> it, that whiskey kicked in i'm feeling good he'll tell, tell you all awesome. about it when you see him again obviously so um <laughs> I know everybody Nailed it. that. That was a good one. That was that was solid. Boom. That was solid. Sh- I want to give a shout out to Charlie Puth. A lot of people go Wiz Khalifa on that. I go Puth. I know that was Puth's song. Yeah. That's classic Puth, though, you know? He came out with a couple okay songs after, but Ugh. you can never you can never 
beat th- the Paul Walker song. I think he's doing like either Burger King or like Marriott commercials right now. Oh no, Puth, yeah. Oh no, it's classic Puth. Hey, though. he's got to do his thing. He's got to pay the bills. Yeah. You know, feed the kids, get them to a college, to be brainwashed into a progressive agenda to socially change us into a Marxist country. It's gonna be great. Yeah, John Wilkes. That Puth. went fucking weird, Ross. John Wilkes Puth. Um, yeah. that guy. I look. He had like shaved in his eyebrows, Giorgio. The whole shit, like. I, I don't get it, um, but I respect it. Hey, God damn it, I respect it. How is Ross Patterson uh, doing today? He's great. No, like how is like Ross? Is Ross good? <laughs> you know, Ross is great. Entertainer Ross-, Ross is always on, but how is like yeah, yeah, Ross yeah, yeah, Patterson? Yeah. Ross, because you called me skinny. I'm not gonna drop my bomb. The Fatterson thing, but, you know, <laughs> no, but like, no. How, how are you doing, buddy? You've been good. The quarantine has been uh, has been rough, uh, to be honest with you. Um, no working out and all that other yeah. shit. Like it's been fucking brutal. And then, uh, I have this cortisol issue. We had a, we had a doctor, Dr. Frank has been on the show a couple of times. Yeah. Um, this guy we're working with. It's um, called not sleeping and working too much. I understand that. However, what happens with too much cortisol and all this shit is mm-hmm. like, they were like, look, you can either get surgery, um, to get the excess cortisol removed. Problem is like they go in through the nose and do that shit. And then you can't talk for four months. And I'm like, well, not doing that. Right. Um, this is one of the best voices in the biz. Like, <laughs> we're not getting rid of this. And they're like, you'll have to retrain yourself and all that other stuff. Or they're like, you can go to an endocrinologist and they'll put you on these things that'll de-stress you out. But it's like, my comment to him was on all of this shit, and, and you would probably be able to give your, your assessment on it as well with what you do is like, it's the stress that drives you to do shit and be great. Whereas I also don't, Uh, like there's a selfish part of me that doesn't want to lose that aspect as well where it's like hey man i like being under deadlines for books and movies and podcasts and all that other shit like i enjoy it like i've got another book coming out of thanksgiving and it's like i I know what i'm up against i know what what, you know what that entails and i know the stress i don't want to sacrifice that part of me where it's like oh man i'm not stressed i got no worries you know when you see those people and you're like no man if there isn't some constant stress in life to put out as much content as you possibly can, just yeah. cool shit that you you love to do, then what is all of it about? Like, if I wanted to take my time on shit, like, great, man. I would probably leave this yeah. world with, like, three movies yeah. and maybe one book, and that's it. No, nah, stress is a great influencer, man. I think a lot of us live for that. It's like the uh, – it, it – it, releases endorphins it gets your brain firing faster it's fun it's stressful obviously in the name but yeah for sure i'm the same way like when it's i I would never want to just like kind of live in the gray area of just like everything's fucking chill i'd be like okay what 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 can we do now well this is the utopia i'd be like but we can make it better like it's the reason i organize my office like once a month i'm like i can make it better just it's yeah for sure and it's that thing and like when he's been on the show it's it's the same thing where it's just like well you know you should fucking, you know, chill out and do this and this and this. And I was like, motherfucker, who has time for that? Like, well, at the end of the day, Ross, not to be, you know, um, you know, a fatalist here, but we're all going to fucking die. We are. Um, you know, the earth at one point is going to cease to exist um, based off of our technology advancements. There's no <laughs> way that we'll make interplanetary like decisions to like Mars. Like we'll get there one day, not in our lifetime with humans, but that will just be a segue to try to get out of the galaxy. But we're, it we're might fucked. be in our lifetime. I mean, Mars Elon Musk, yeah. Musk might do it, dude. Well, I mean, but you look at, you know, the Mars curiosity Rover that barely got there and, uh, but it mean, did fine. And look at the pictures from it. Shit. Oh dude, it's dope. But uh, you mean still the sandstorms, the sustainability, then worrying about how do we get like, functionality of like sustainment of a biological human like it's it's near impossible but how long did matt damon live there Giorgio? it was a long time that is a scientific film it's called Um, sci-fi but it was true i get look i believe that matt damon went there it's a documentary he's a method actor yeah i think he went there yeah i don't know you know you know tom cruise is shooting a movie in space right everybody's doing the space movies no no no. in space in space in space 200 million dollars uh, Doug Lyman is directing it. He's in it. In space or like outer atmosphere? No, in space. And so mm. Elon Musk is involved, and they announced it right after. Uh, I gotta give it Bob Tom Cruise. Like I, I, Scientology is just ridiculous to me. But the guy is doing some epic shit. Man. Focused. He's focused. He's focused. <laughs> like he's like, I like that. Where he's like, I'm gonna go to space and make a movie. I, I commend that. Yeah. Two and and Warner Brothers gave him two hundred million dollars to do it. Well, yeah. My thing is this, uh, when you get there, cause just from a production aspect of it, like 
all I kept thinking was, is I was like, man, the way that Hollywood makes space look anyways, like it's just going to be black, you know, yeah. some stars and shit. Like the only thing will be why like, spend the 200 million. You can do that know, here. For, I feel like it's going to be more than 200 million to put him in space. Yes. Yes. He's going to be in like high atmospheric fucking they orbit. They will go this, way over budget on that fucking movie. Like yeah. it's the dumbest shit of all time. I feel like time. it takes $200 million at least to even get into high orbit. Yeah. Oh, but easily. Easily. We, the, the hilarious part about it is we had a guest on the show, um, a musician. The guy was brilliant. His name is Barnes Courtney. He's one of my favorites, right? And his videographer who was shooting all of his shit, which is how I saw him online because he had these dope-ass Instagram like videos, right? And we ended up hiring him for uh, drinking broettes. And I was talking to him privately. And then uh, I was like, what do you really, really want to do in life? Because I was like, you're a fantastic filmmaker. Um, and he was like, man, what I really would like to do is, is direct movies. And I was like, of course, that makes sense. It's the yeah. next logical step. And he goes, uh, and I go, what's your dream in this life? And he goes, I want to shoot the first movie on the moon. <laughs> Dead serious. And it's like maybe 11 at night. And I was like, eh, I've had an edible. I'll entertain this. Yeah. Um, why do you want to shoot a movie on the moon? And he's like, and he went through the whole story of it. Right. And I was like, cool, man. And he goes, you promise you won't tell anybody. I was like, no, I won't tell. I won't tell anybody. I remember when we hung up the phone. It's, I went down, woke up my wife, and I was like, the "Motherfucker said he wanted to shoot a movie on the moon, right?" We both started dying laughing, and then no lie. Two months later, Tom Cruise movie announced in space oh, he's doing with it? Elon Musk, and I was like, "It's not him. Uh, somebody else." But it's like, but he was so worried in this conversation that somebody was going to take this idea of shooting in space and and yeah. the moon and all that stuff, and. Uh, well, they say shoot for I the laughed. stars, you may hit the moon. They you know? do. They do. That's a saying. Um, yeah, I think they also say uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that was uh, yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald. I, Michael Jordan. No, I've, Oh, it wasn't? Okay. No, it was actually Wayne Gretzky. Okay. I like to say that. Everybody oh, it was. Michael Jordan. So it wasn't it's, Lee Harvey Oswald when he killed no. JFK? <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Because <laughs> he, did, he, yeah, he made look. If he didn't keep firing, was he one for three on that, or how did that work out? I don't know. You know, it's still out. If the grassy knoll was firing, <laughs> Ross, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, but this mother, this poor bastard, like somebody's. You know, Tom Cruise is now going to shit on his dream and shoot this movie in space, and that's well, it. You, but that's in space. No one's doing the moon movie yet. So maybe, maybe, maybe there's opportunity there. That maybe. seems like a lot of high budget for you can recreate that in CGI. We got deep fake now. Same. I mean, that shit's easy. Same. Like sh shooting in space is is ridiculous and yeah. they're gonna go way over budget um that that is crazy to me uh but we got, we got some sponsors matt you know the rules here oh shit you pay for this fucking shit wagon to be on the air these aren't endorsed by me one of them will be we'll Who's do black that? rifle call i tell you what um, i was hoping you were say ghost bed it goes bed.com is our favorite yeah it's been a while it's been a while ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros sleep so good it's scary I do, do I get royalties for coming up with that? Do it. You, know? you got to do the thing. You got to do the, the, the ghost. Woo! There it is. <laughs> I've missed it. They're a title sponsor for the show. 30% off for everybody who's a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or you work in the government. If you work in the government, they're giving you 30% off. I of everything still do start. have two ghost beds, and uh, this is first world problems, but there was my dog peed them, and my maid did clean them, and she... <laughs> she uh, carpet cleaned them, and now it looks perfect. Best in the biz. I I I do not get any money from Ghost Bed, but uh, I enjoy their beds quite quite the very often, best every night. Actually, they have this adjustable base now that goes underneath it with a remote control. That's too much for me. It's not. I, I just like a comfort mattress. I said the same thing. I I, I thought because I didn't have it right, and so I'm we a moved simple here. man, Ross. That's what I thought I was too. And we moved here, and I was like, uh, they were like, hey, um, do you need help moving or whatever? And I was like, you know. I'm promoting the adjustable base. I was like, you want to throw one of those in my way? You want to throw one of those daddy's way? And they were like, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll throw it your way. So we set it up and like it comes with a remote control. It's plugged oh, into the wall. Dude, it goes Does it like lift you up and shit? all the way up. Oh, by the way, if you want your legs up, just your legs, it'll go your legs. See, I'm not doing that because if I like drink heavy, I start snoring. My wife's going to fucking lift me up. And I'm going to wake up and be like, what the fuck? She's like, your ass was snoring, dude. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And wait, but the other part is there's a vibrator in it. There's a vibrator? Yes. So it, you can Damn. go head to toe, vibrator in this thing. And I'm like... Is it called like the Cardi oh, B setting where it just kind of twerks underneath you? It's called the WAP setting, the wet-ass pussy setting. Yeah. Oh, WAP, WAP. Yeah. That dance is gnarly, dude. That's some flexibility. Have Isn't it? that dance? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Have you seen her pussy? I think it's crazy as well. Well, 
before you get into the other sponsors, sure. Uh, Cardi B versus Nicki Minaj. Oh, Nicki Minaj. I go to Nicki Minaj, 100%. Now, if you would ask me mm. Megan the Stallion versus Nicki Minaj, I think that's a closer battle. Really? Yes. As far as skill-wise. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Skill-wise. I saw a Cardi B interview Biden, and that was like... A, it's oh, the worst. The worst the, thing of all time. the worst ever. Okay, back with your sponsors. Black Rifle Coffee Doc. Oh, wait, you're going... <laughs> That'll be next. We'll go ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. Uh, if you're a regular human like myself, you get 25% off. If you order a mattress, you get two free pillows with it. And as always, they got a 36-month page to go program. No interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That base, dude, you just heard some real talk because we've been drinking. Best, best in the biz. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got blackriflecoffee.com. Promo code drinking bros20 will get you 20% off. Is that a new hat? Is that true, Ross? If you if you sit like how I'm sitting, yeah. you won't sit this way if you drink more black rifle coffee. Cause you know, <laughs> I know some motherfucker is gonna call me out. No. Uh yes. We don't care. We're amongst friends. I, I don't we do what I fucking want. Of the week and all that shit. So I've got to have the computer in front of me. But like No, I we I'm move just into the I'm sitting comfortable week. drinking whiskey. I've had a long week. I'm just chilling right Same, now. Same, dude. No, yeah, uh, dude, we come out with fucking all the new designs. We take pride in it. Everybody knows black rifle. Yeah. You get the fucking space shirt on. Space too. shirt. Is that new? Yes, it is. We have like a hundred new designs coming out the end of the year. We're we're crushing the game over there. We're trying to at least. So, um, one of the things you guys have done really well, in all honesty, is uh, you've made the apparel cool. So therefore, I see people wearing it fucking everywhere. Whereas most companies are just like, oh yeah, we we have merch yeah. and whatever, but it sucks. And you're like, all right, well, well sweet. The thing for us with that is like we want to design shit we want to wear. Like I would I would never want a skew or anything in our company where I look at it and go, ugh. Yeah. Like I want to put that shit on and wear it proudly. And that's just kind of what we go with. So because it's one of those things where if you even if you hate coffee, like your clothes are cool. So it's like, yeah, go buy a hat or something. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a, it's a cultural movement. We stand for freedom. We stand for fucking, you know. The shit we believe butt in, fucking? man. So, but fucking sure, I don't yeah, give a dude. shit. As long as you fucking, you know, respect the flag and and are a good human, but fuck away. Yeah, dude. Guys, I fuck. I fuck some butts in my day. Who hasn't? Yeah. Who hasn't, dude? And but there's more. Give butts me more to whiskey. Come. You might be the next one. Goddamn right. And that'll lead us into the next sponsor. GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros boner pills, Matt. Oh wow. Come on, they've overtaken Viagra now. Those guys are wow. They're huge. They're doing fucking UFC, ESPN, everything. All right. No doctor visit anymore, so you just go online. Therefore, they were able to stomp Viagra because you don't have to go into a doctor and be like, my dick doesn't work. Oh, wow. My fucking dick doesn't work. I need pills. Now you can just go online. It's a five-question test. Uh, 48 hours gets shipped to your house. In a discreet package, it just says, Roman, your girlfriend, wife, or mistress won't know you're getting boner pills shipped to you. Would they care, though? Like, I feel like if you couldn't get Who? To- your your wife or mistress or your your boyfriend your girlfriend if you're like, taking it all the time will they ever know why would they care because it's that's what i'm saying it, that's the whole point of taking it well i'm glad Pleasure. you brought that up we had it we had one listener who who sent in a very graphic photo mm. and said that his wife was really pissed off at the end of the weekend because uh, he absolutely he just blew some outer walls destroyed her, i probably yeah. shouldn't say that but sugar walls it. sugar walls is what we yeah, call it here hey. matt if she enjoyed it, good on her. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she did. He did. Um, oh. He got a good hearty oh. laugh out of it. Oh. And the boner pick he sent in, by the way, was mm. it looked angry. Like, And it's it's hard for me to say that, that his, his penis appeared angry, uh, but it was bright red. You could tell it had been used Yeah, had malicious intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it looked like you, OJ's you knife. You severely analyzed this dick pic, apparently. I, I always do. And you, everybody knows that about me. Yeah, um, that I like. I will scrutinize a dick pic. I find them endlessly hilarious, and I love gay sex scenes in movies. Got it. Yeah, I mean, you you know me at this point. Like, yeah, I mean, Brokeback Mountain is your ringtone. Bro- Brokeback, by the way, it's actually a FaceTime opening nights. Yeah, I went by myself, and I sat in a theater, packed theater in L.A., and laughed my ass off through the entire movie. Like it was like Anchorman to me, and, and I loved every second of it. Still love Brokeback Mountain the movie, right? No, yeah. everybody else in the theater was so pissed off at me though. They were like, you're so childish and immature. I heard everything you could because I was just <laughs> laughing. When Heath Ledger spit in his hand and then flipped over Gyllenhaal, I was just like, we're doing stuff. I've, I've yet to watch it. But really? Maybe, maybe I'll watch it tonight. It's a in, great in movie. In Dan's bed. I'm sleeping in Dan's bed. I asked him in the hallway as yeah, he's yeah, leaving yeah. to go to the airport. D- Dan's, so. uh, Dan's out of town this weekend. He wants to go see a lady this weekend. So. Oh. 
Yeah. I, I hope he took some. GetRoman.com mm-hmm. forward slash drinking bros to those boner pills. You missed my segues, Ross. I do. You, you know? I do. You were actually, you were always really good at that. Hey. You know. Jared's terrible at it. Horrible at segues. You know, you know we all have our, uh, our, our quirks. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if you're if you're wondering out there, I know I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Uh, best gay sex scene in a movie: Behind the Candelabra on HBO. It was a made for HBO movie with Michael Douglas and Matt Damon, and it's a real. No, you said. I thought you said your favorite gay sex scene was the the one with it's like the cabin thing, and they're like they're they're they're. It's like out, like uh, fuck. They're instructors for like outdoors kids camp, right? You, d- fuck. You- oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, th- this is a, but this is like a professional movie. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. So you're talking about Wet Hot American yeah, Summer? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Correct. So that's in a comedy version, right? Okay. What the the gay sex scene in Wet Hot American Summer is uh, Michael Ian Black, and and ironically, it's Bradley Cooper is the one that's getting fucked in the ass in that movie. You know, and it's great. Sex and a, knows no gender, Ross. They kick a soccer. Only like Bradley Cooper kicks this soccer ball as he's getting fucked in the ass. Oh. There's a soccer ball on the ground, and he's just trying to get it out of his way because he's trying to gain more footing, oh. like traction on his footing. Um, I was getting plowed in the ass, and it was great. So comedy, yes, that is correct. That is number one in my okay. book. The gay sex scene in Wet Hot American Summer is the best. Drama wise, it's behind the candelabra, and it's Michael Douglas blasting out Matt Damon. So, it's, it's at this point in the podcast that I'm on Drinking Bros. <laughs> it's it's here. I was earlier. I wasn't sure what podcast it was on. Now it's now it's Drinking Bros. You're Got welcome. It. Got it. You're welcome. Yeah. But in this scene, the reason why it's you're so gonna keep going. Great. I know. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. gonna keep. Going. I know I, you. We're going to to go through this yeah. step by step. Is he's playing um, uh, Liberace, and so. Liberace's thing was he made his gay lover look like him. So he made Matt Damon oh, wow. get facial surgery to look like oh, him. Oh, wow. That's some super egotistical shit. Yeah. So he's doing poppers. You know what poppers are? Those, isn't it like paint that you sniff or something? Yeah. Close. How would you describe a popper, Giorgio? Um, really? Yeah. Poppers. I, well, are. I know because. You pop it open and it's just like it relax it's this you euphoria. Or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he's doing poppers, and then right as he fucking blasts, because he's Michael Douglas is riding Matt Damon, um, right as he fucking blasts. I mean, it's a, it's a two shot, and they're right there in camera, so you get to see the whole interaction. You're like, oh my god, dude, Michael Douglas is playing. I think Matt you Damon. have a career as a, uh, a a a gay gay porn star film critic. So here's the thing: I don't enjoy gay porn. I only enjoy it hmm. in cinema like cinematic movies okay like dramas and comedies i can't get into gay porn as a as a thing like have you, have you tried it though yes yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give it a go i can't I, dude i can't make it like a minute in it's too much really it's too much i need to know that they were acting and i need to know i think the the uncomfortableness behind the scenes of like so hey man like i just i all i imagine is the conversation that michael douglas had with matt damon in the trailer as they're walking in robes to set. Yeah. Because that's what happens. When you're doing right. a nude scene, you're in robes walking to set. I've had some pretty gross scenes in my day, so yeah. I get it. And I imagine Michael Douglas was just like, uh, so hey, man. Um, so I'm going to be on top of you. Um, if you could spread your your legs, maybe your cheeks a little bit. Because they both of them are great actors. Right. Oscar winners. Yeah. Um, you know, they want, they work through this whole thing. Right. I just want to hear that, that BTS, the behind the scenes moment yeah. of that convo between, uh, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon. This is a great sponsorship dialogue <laughs> right now. And I'm just loving every second. Of well, it. there's no sponsor anymore, but I'm, oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about real life now. Okay. I'm just got it. Got it. Got life. it. I, I'm now, whether here. They took Roman I'm mildly intoxicated and I'm just a sponge taking in whatever yeah. weird bacteria juices you're giving me. Yeah. 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 So they show the 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 two completion shot too where it's mm-hmm. like he comes inside fucking matt damon and it's that uh, like the two of them grunting together and then the cutaway and you're like ah shit like i laughed forever it's a great movie it ended up winning like a bunch of emmys and shit like that um and then after that like there was a dead period for me where i was like man i have not seen any gay sex scenes in movies for a while and, and then, then Brokeback then, mountain no rocket oh. man uh, the Elton John movie that came out last summer. Oh, uh, I didn't watch. Great. I highly recommend it. It was, it was one of the best. And I'm a, you know, I'm a huge music biopic guy. Like 100%. That knocked it out of the fucking park. That is the end all be all. Like, I don't know how you can beat that biopic wise. Dead serious. Um, it, the whole thing was a musical. The guy actually sang. 
Elton John's songs in the movie throughout the entire thing. So there was no like ADR. There was no voiceover. Like oh, he, he was, actually sang him? Uh, really oh, sang dope. him and uh, in his own voice. And uh, it was close to Elton John, but not identical, which was nice. So he wasn't doing an impression. Um, but there was a, a sex scene in there, uh, you know, when, he, when Elton John has his first gay sex scene. And I was like, uh, but he goes mesh on this guy. Oh. And I didn't know that was a thing. And then I was like, oh, man, that was really dumb of me. Why did I just assume that gay guys don't have missionary sex? I mean, you could probably have, you know, anal sex with a, a female in that position. So I've never thought about it, though. Have you? I mean, I don't know what would prompt me to think about that. But now that you know about it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Hey, you do you in the bedroom. I'm for it. Go for it. Have fun. So here's why I enjoy Elton John it. That's rocket man. Yeah, that's why I enjoy that sex yeah. scene. It taught me something. Hey, if <laughs> I learned a lot. <laughs> so not only was I enjoying the musical ride of, of the journey of Rocket Man. Yeah. Hey, I love a good musical, man. Um, you know, the tell me something, girl. Are you living in this lonely world? So, so were good. you into A Star is Born? Dude, I love it. So did I. Jared hated it. He thought what? it was the worst fucking movie of the year. Well, it's Jared. He likes every time he says there's a good movie, it's shitty. Even we, we agreed that The Predators the other day was a terrible movie, but... Dude, I, you got to commend Lady Gaga, man. Like, it, I for the audience, if you ever... Again, everything's politically infused. I'm just saying straight as a fucking content creator. If you watch her sing Big Band, yeah. bro, the girl's got pipe. She's amazing. She's a fucking great artist. Yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed that movie. And I thought the artistic approach to, like, the dude that was, like, the singer. And then, you know, she became famous. And he realized that he was, like, the inhibitor to her success because he's, just, like, this drunk dude and takes his life. It was, like, a really cool storyline. And the music that was, you know, a part of the film I thought was great. I yeah. loved it. And I always tell people, I'm like, man, when I if I go out this weekend, I'm getting Bradley Cooper stars born drunk. Because nobody got more fucked no. up than he did in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll do that. Cause... And I'm able to separate art from, like, life of, like, great. I don't give a shit who you voted for or whatever. Like, I'll still go see your movies and everything else you know that's the way it should be i mean the hamburger analogy sometimes it's nice to like dude and the the majority of us have more in common than we have uh in disagreements to be yeah. honest with you yeah like that's you know this doesn't mean i think some people are fucking idiots and they're brainwashed which i absolutely do but of course which i'm sure they'd say the thing, same thing about me but i'll beat them i, d I doubt elect. it i don't think so not right now if they i wouldn't have that conversation right now because that whiskey's feeling real fine yeah, I've been yeah, today, yeah, yeah so i'm like 8 p.m. Like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things for me where, like, I look at some of these assholes and I'm like, oh, man. Ross, hit me, with, you, but I love hit me with a question that no one no one would suspect you asked me for. Let's let's end this podcast good. What do you got for me? In, in, in real life? Just anything. Come on. Hit me with something good. I want to think for a second. All right. Okay. I, we'll think about this. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. Come on, host. Yeah. As a, as a business owner. Mm-hmm. With this upcoming election with Biden or Trump, yep. what helps you more? Who wins? Um, the security of the nation matters more than um, um, capitalism on, on this one. I think well, capitalism will succeed. Uh, so I think that pre-election cycles inevitably uh, tailor themselves towards more gun ownership and all these other things, like when Hillary was going to get uh, look like she was going to win the election. But that that that's a flash in the pan. We want sustainment of constitutional rights. So I'd rather take a cultural change to loving freedom, and I'll take that all day over, you know, making a profit in in a year. Because what happens down the road? Right. Like, and I, it, we're a coffee company. We're you, not black. You know why I asked this, company. right? Why? Somebody, uh, shit, I was in an airport the other day. Somebody asked me. They were like, "Hey, man, um, you lean conservative on your shows. Uh, would it be helpful if Biden won?" Because more people would tune in and, and listen to the shit or whatever. And I was like, uh, mm. and I go, I, I never thought of it like that. And I go, no, no. And then, no. so I wondered, like, as a conservative coffee company, no. if somebody like Biden won, where you'd be like, all right, cool, man. We feel like we can rally against it with a certain product and get in there and fucking rage against the machine, right? And uh, I, that question had never been posed to me before. Yeah, but uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I think from per potentially a business perspective, it would be um, good for some people in the business space, but absolutely not. Like, I, what matters most is like being able to say whatever the fuck I want, do what I want, have my guns, and be a law-abiding, great citizen and contribute to our community. Like, and that starts with the right person in charge. And you know, I mean, I think it's it's a crazy world right now. Like, I think. 
the people that are smart enough to be president don't want to be president. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get Evan to run for president, honestly. You know, I got, I got, I got, I got one more year, a month and a year, and then I could run. So I've said this all the time. I was like, man, it, it's the worst job in the world. It's terrible. You're and scrutinized. The day you take it, 50% of America hates Hate you, you. Yeah. no matter what. And I look at, I look at somebody like Trump where I'm like, man, he, he's so rich and he's 73 years old, I think right now. Why mm. do this job? If you, if you weren't trying to change America, what's the point, right? So let's say he does win, um, which I hope he does. And it gets through, As he's 77 and 78 years old, right? At that point, if you were doing it for fame or power, at 78, you're out. Like you're, you know, you probably got about four more years left to live. And his brother just died. <laughs> Dead serious. His brother just died two weeks ago or oh, a week really? ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was a year younger than him. Um, and he had one day's notice. Even the president of the United States had one day's notice. And I'm like, hey, man, brother's fucking dying in New York. You got to get that. How'd he die? Uh, some type of heart complication. It nah, wasn't like tragic. COVID or something like that. But uh, yeah. But when you look at it, you're like, well, yeah, shit. He's in his seventies. I mean, look, the the average male lives to be about seventy eight. Like when he finishes this job, he'll be at that age where it's like, all right, well, if he died at seventy eight, no one would be like, oh, it was too soon. Um. So for me personally, when I look at it, I'm like, man, he clearly wants to change the country or help the country because. There's no reason to do it at that age because you can't enjoy it. You get out of there at 78. It's not like you're like, yeah. fuck it, I'm going to Malta, yeah. you know? And you always like the price. I mean, I, I think it's a pretty clear decision for me. It's like you can disagree with certain statements or policies, but at the end of the day, it's like, do you want someone that might be mildly ego-driven or do you want to go with someone that's mentally not there? And and, and that's Joe Biden. Like yeah. the, the dude is not there. And then what do they do with the VP with Kamal Harris? Like, Dude, she's like a socialist. It, it, like, if, if you look at what she's, it, I don't want to talk about politics. The Green, like, dude, the green New Deal and all that crazy, shit. Yeah, it's dude, crazy, Like, fucking crazy. And then all you have to do is go and look at fucking Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who they didn't write because they're puppets in all this fucking administration as far as what they want to do in the anti-gun laws. It, it's, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. And I can only hope, based off of the tragedy and what has succumbed to a lot of communities and families with the COVID-19 is like, Everybody wanted a gun because they're like, well, who's going to protect me? And they fucking defund the police. Well, who's going to protect me? I need a gun. Can't buy a gun. Guess what? You got to wait fucking 14 days in California. How's it fucking yeah. feel? It's not, it didn't impact you. you. You never took the knowledge to understand how it could impact people like us that have to be responsible for our own safety. It's fucking an insane world. Just like vote on rational shit, not mm -hmm. like emotional, like microaggression, progressive agenda that wants to turn this fucking country into a communist state like no no eat a fucking dick fuck you fuck off fuck you and the only way we change that is go to the voting voting polls and vote not november 3rd november 3rd uh and, and the reason i asked this question i, I turned around this guy after he asked me and he goes uh i hope biden wins no. i was like what the fuck do you do for a living yeah. i've never said that. i'm i'm a hard voting for trump on this one man this is there 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 there's no like same there there is no and i've never said that publicly i there there, there is like I, I think Biden's speaking tonight, right? He is, yeah, yeah. I'd love to watch that. The same, the dude. I, the dude is, and 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 this is the problem, right? Ross is like, it's not a war against liberal ideology necessarily, or the Democratic Party. That's what divisiveness is incurred doing all this fucking identity politics. It's a matter of the well-being in the situation that we're given. How we can elect someone that at least sustains or maintains the freedoms of Americans, increases the quality of life. Biden's a fucktard. And what he's going to have is he's going to have all these fucking young liberals who are socialists that thinks it worked. Like, like read a fucking history book other than your fucking whatever education you got. And, 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 and understand it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's work. It failed every single time, every time, every single time. Yeah. And I'd rather vote for a more like capitalist driven society, which I believe in. And it, I'm, I'm too buzzed right now to even talk in that, but it, no, it, it's fine. But, but you have to have a voice. You have to vote. You can sit there on your Facebook and your Twitter and bitch all day, but you have to go out and you have to vote and you have to make a difference. That that's, that's how the power of the people change. Cause at the end of the day, the fucking government works for us. Yeah. They take our money and tax money and they spend it in all these fucked up ways. But the only way we can change is going out and voting for someone that will at least keep us going in, in a good or right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm with you. The, the, the guy in the airport, by the way, wanted Biden. And I was like, I was like, what do you do? He's, he was a t-shirt company. 
And, uh, and he goes, yeah, man, my sales will go up. If he was conservative. And yeah. I was like, yeah. no shit. So I yeah. go, you would rather lose. You ra-? And he goes, yeah, man, because my company's going to make more money. And I was like, man, that's... Well, I go, luckily, I'm not in a fucking position Yeah, but there's like certain that. fourth order effects to all of that, right? That, that's a flash in the pan situation because then you have to look at like the cap gain taxes and all these things that they're trying to increase because, you know, social stratification and all the, the, the wealthy run the country. Well, you know, like it's performance-based criteria and mm-hmm. you can't have lazy people fucking how they have a voice but like you, you got to work in life you got to do the like you got to put the work in t- to be successful yeah and you can't be a lazy couch potato and expect to be a professional athlete like you can't be a michael jordan without being obsessed with the game and that's all you think about best doc ever by the such way such a good doc dude michael jordan fucking class last a. dance dude, that, yeah was, uh, was dope the man very best in the biz now's the point in the show where you get to the drinking bro of the week matthew dope. you know it well i'm gonna let you do it who would you like to be the drinking bro of the week to me shit yeah. man i feel like who you've been rocking with lately that nobody knows about um you know i'll give it to eli underscore double tap yeah him and I, man, we've been kind of quarantined together. I don't hang out with a lot of people. Um, but Eli, man, he's been such a good um, resource for the company and my best friend now. And just like, dude, we, we, we rock out, man. We, Eli's rad, man. Dude, he's great, dude. Um, day so, one homie, man. He's been day around one. from fuck, years, man. Years. He works on I met him on Range 15. Yeah, well, he was in Range 15. I knew him before that because I met him through Friday and stuff. But, man, in, in the drinking, bro, I just like... Dude, I just like positive people, man. I just, that's where I'm at in life right now. I'm so sick of all the fucking drama and all these like, all this bullshit. I just want to like work my ass off, make a difference, laugh and come. Like I always say it, laugh and come, dude. It's it's pretty, life's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. And then if someone wants to punch me in the face, I'm going to fucking, you know, I'll break my bicep with that tiny face. arm dude dude i'll fuck someone i'll fuck you up with this bitch with that little let's tiny go. arm let's go we'll find out tonight we're going <laughs> me you and i are gonna have some fucking sushi yeah buddy <laughs> uh for matthew best uh i'm ross patterson this is the drinking bros good night everyone uh-